this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this little mini series that we're doing within that larger playlist deals with balanced two factor factorial designs without interaction. And in part seven here, we're going to do an R illustration of all the mathematics and theory that we've done in the previous six videos. So here we're going to look at an example from Montgomery. Douglas Montgomery's book, example 7.1, where they look at the battery life, you know, how long in hours does a battery last, and they're investigating the material type and the temperature of, you know, that the battery is operated under. And so why is hours, uh, mat type is material type, temperature is, you know, the temperature that the battery is con operated at. So this is the data and now we want to put it in matrix form so we can you know use of the matrix theory that we developed and show that it's equal to what R does and how it does it. So here there's three levels of A type A or you know material type and there's three temperatures that we're going to look at. So A is three, B is three and there's four replicates within each of those. Now we're going to just put the response in variable y. The column space associated with the material type and temperature will be stored in xA and xB respectively. And so this is the design matrix in matrix form. So we have a column of all ones. Then the next three columns deal with you know factor A, and then the next three columns deal with factor B. So we need to load the library mass so we can use the generalized inverse and we're going to create perpendicular projection matrices. So the first one is the identity matrix and I is kind of a protected variable. Capital I is so I call it ID for identity. J is the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of ones. MA is the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of XA. MB, perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of, you know, associated with factor B or temperature. And the generalized, or the M, the perpendicular projection matrix on the whole column space of X is, we'll denote it by M. Now, in the videos, earlier videos, we showed that M has a structure of MA plus MB minus J. And to show that they're all equal, we use the all equal function and it and it shows that we, that they are now let's run the actual ANOVA and print out the summary and I'm showing you two because we entered the variables in different orders the first one we did material type then temperature and then the second model we did temperature then material type and why is that significant well in the ANOVA table that's print out in R they use what's called type one sums of squares and so the order absolutely matters unless you have a balanced design, which we do. And so notice that the sum of squares are equal. And in balanced designs, you can create orthogonal column spaces and, you know, and then the sums of squares, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, we don't need type one, type two, type three, because they're all equal. And I have a video on that called regression approach to ANOVA in this playlist design, uh, you know, general linear models, design of experiments. So here to create or to reproduce these sums of squares using the matrices that we just created, we'll look at the sum of squares for A, which is 10, 6, 8, 3, or, you know, but the 0.7 rounds it to 0.4, which is what's exactly in the model. Sum of squares for temperature is 39, you know, 119, so it's the same. Sum of squares air is the same. And the total is just the addition of those. Now, the total's not, they don't include it in this table. But to show you that the sum of squares total is partitioned in the sum of squares for material type, temperature, and then air, we use the all equal function and show that they are. Now, this one, MA times Y, I want to show you the structure of 
this variable. So they call it the mean for treatment A or factor A. And notice it's it's constant, you know, a constant 108 and then a constant 10, 125. And what that represents are the means of each material type, right? 125, 108, 83, and those are the means. So it's in a very specific structure. And I'm going to point you back to the videos, the earlier videos in this mini series that we did. Now here's the structure of M beta times Y. Here are the means, 64 is the same, 107 is the same, 104 is the same, and then that group is repeated A times, and in this example, there A is 3, so it's repeated A, you know, 3 times. The grand mean, J times Y, is just a constant vector with the grand mean in it, and that's what it's called the grand mean vector. Now let's look at the degrees of freedom associated with these sums of squares. Now I want to reprint out the ANOVA table so we don't have to keep you know, scrolling back to what it was. So the degrees of freedom deals with the rank of that quadratic matrix of the sum of squares. So that's what we're looking at. So the MA minus J, or the rank of that, is 2. And it's the material type degrees of freedom is 2. And then because it's item potent, you could also just take the sum of the diagonal elements and get two. Degrees of freedom associated with temperature is two, or you just take that sum. The degrees of freedom associated with the air is the rank of I minus M, which is 31, which is the same as the ANOVA table, right? And, or you could just take the sum of that item potent matrix, which is also 31. Now, to show you that these quadratic forms are independent, we take the multiplication of that matrix in the middle of the quadratic forms. And here I'm using all equal to show you that it's all equal to a matrix of all zeros of the same dimensions. And it is. And so this is the sum of squares there and the sum of squares for material type. They're independent. And the second one is showing that the sum of squares there is independent of sum of squares beta or temperature and it's also equal to the zero matrix so they are independent which then creates these f tests that we want to do so let's again print out the ANOVA table and to calculate the mean squared errors we take the sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom and so that's 5342 which is mean square for material type or type a b is the same 19559 Mean squared error is 898, which is the same as in the analysis table. The F statistic is the ratio of those mean squares, and 5.9 is the same. 21.7 is you know is the same. Now the p-value is the if you take that F value, the test statistic, and calculate the area in the tail, which is what we do here, and that's the same. 0.00651. And this is the same. Now, in this video, you know, we we just used tests that we derived. We didn't use the partial F test. And the reason is it's a balanced design and we don't need to. And in this example, I show that they're the same. So we fit a full model and then a reduced model. And that's what we do here. So in this bottom ANOVA table we have temp and material type and the top one we just have material type so uh, temperature is not included so now we take the difference of those the difference of the sum of squared errors which is this and we calculate it and it's and it's equal to 39119 and then we calculate the F test but that's the same as if we'd have just done the F test in the full model Right, those those are the same values: 39, 119, 21, 7. They're the same, and that's because the the columns are orthogonal. And we can do that in the in this example here, where we leave out material type, and then we use the partial F test, which is the difference of the sum of squared errors, and we see that that is the same as if we had just used the F test in the full model. Now contrast, um, 
and and I highly recommend you go back to a little four-part mini-series in this big playlist of design of experiments to uh, show this. Now, to show that uh, this linear combination is estimable, we take it times the generalized inverse of x transpose x times x transpose x. And if we get this linear combination back, then that's an estimable linear combination of the beta parameters. And so what this linear combination represents with the one and then all zeros, remember that's what's being pre-multiplied by that beta vector. So it picks off just, and actually this one is just the, the mu parameter is what that represents, but we don't get it back here. So each individual beta parameter is not estimable. And you can tell because we're not getting that, that, um, back you know that that linear combination back now here are some estimable functions and so this this first one here it's one one zero zero one zero zero so that's the alpha you know it's mu alpha one and beta one so that actually represents the theoretical mean for the one one cell in our in our experiment and if we get this back which we do one one zero zero one zero zero that means this is an estimable function of our beta parameters. And so any combination like that, a mu, one alpha and one beta is estimable. That represents the mean of say the ij level in our, in our design. So those are estimable functions. Now to create contrast, treatment contrast, we, we create a linear combination of just the alphas. And so we have one half minus one, one half. And those do sum to zero, and we're only dealing with the alpha, so it's a treatment contrast for material type. And that is the that is the linear combination of the row space that we need for this to be estimable. Um, and one of the theorems in theorem one, we said if it's a treatment contrast and it's estimable, then Rho times M is equal to Rho times MA. And I'm just showing you that this is. And you'll have to go back to the theorem to see that exactly. And then we do the same thing for treatment contrast for factor B. We show that the theorem is true that Rho M is equal to Rho M beta for treatment contrast for beta. Now in theorem three, we create orthogonal contrast um, C1 and C2, and since it's A equals 3, there's only two independent linear contrasts, you know, the orthogonal linear contrast. And if we sum the, you know, the components, multiply the components and add, it does it's a zero, so they are orthogonal. And then we find the P1 and P2 are in the videos, row 1, row 2, the, uh, which is the linear combination of the row space that creates these appropriate uh, I called them lambda values in the previous theory, the videos. So these are the sum of squares associated with these orthogonal contrasts. There's two of them, 141 and 10, 5, 4, 2. So if we add those, we get 10, 683 but notice look at the sum of squares for treatment a it's 10 6 8 3 which is the same as this addition of the sum of squares and those orthogonal contrasts and that's showing you that that we can partition the sum of squares for factor a into orthogonal contrast you know those sum of squares for those orthogonal contrasts now that we're going to load the EM means, which is estimated marginal means, that's the library. And we're going to plug in these two orthogonal contrasts for material type and see what it pops out. And this is it. Now, if we look at these contrasts in the bottom piece here, we're going to try to reproduce those in um, using matrix theory. And so here's the first sum of squares estimate or the least squares estimate of the first contrast which is minus 4.2 and that's what we get and that's what 
the EM means produces the you could also produce it this way rho so what the first one was the C1 is that linear combination of the least squares estimate for beta so that's what this highlighted represents and then we could or we could just find that rho which is the linear combination of the rho space that creates this C1 and then take it times m times y and we get the same thing so both approaches are okay uh, the first approach approach is probably used way more the second one we produced the estimate for the second one the same as the the mean so we use the matrix theory now the variance estimates associated with this is the is this oh we don't need these last two so here's the variance associated with the first sum of squares. And if we take the square root, we get 10.6, which is the same as the sum of squares there for this one. And for some the second sum of squares associated with the second orthogonal contrast, we get a error associated with 12.2. And up here we get 12.2. So it's the same. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. I don't want to run the video too long. Uh, please remind me to post the code in the comments if I don't. And the reason I say that is I time delay these videos. So I create two or three videos a weekend and then I time delay them. But when I time delay them, YouTube doesn't let me put comments in a video that's being time delayed. So it has to be released and then I can put the comments or the program in the comments. And you might say, well, just put it in the description. Well, the description doesn't allow me to use these funky symbols like the, the arrow and, and stuff like that. And so I can't put it in the description. Otherwise, it's not a true R program. All right. So I hope you like this. I sure did. Um, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.